Link is the third of the four stages in the construction of the Lebesgue integral. The first stage dealt with characteristic functions of bounded intervals, ones like this. The second stage with step functions. And the third stage, L inc, deals with functions which are the limit almost everywhere of increasing sequences of step functions. Then the fourth stage, L1, deals with differences of functions from L inc. Well, You've seen the details of these first two stages in the earlier units, and you're just about to start on the details of this third stage. So what we thought we'd do here is not to look at the proofs of any of the theorems in the unit, but rather to concentrate on the definition of the integral in L inc, and try and show you why the various ingredients occur in that definition. Well, because of our constructive approach, we've got to be quite clear what we mean by the integral in our first two stages. So let's just recap that. We started with functions of this kind, characteristic functions of bounded intervals like i. And then for any function of this kind, we defined the integral to be the length of this interval. That is just the area here. We then moved on to step functions. Now, a step function is a linear combination of characteristic functions of bounded intervals. And for each of these, we define the integral in the obvious way. Given any expression for a step function as a linear combination of characteristic functions, then the integral of phi is just defined as the same linear combination of the separate integrals. Well, before we look at the details of the definition at this third stage, Roger Duke is going to remind us of the properties that what we wanted this integral to have. Remember, we want limits and integrals to commute. So if we have some sequence of functions converging to some limit function, then we want the integral of our limit function to be just as limit of our sequence of integrals. Well, that's what we want. So following our constructive approach, we're going to take sequences of step functions because we already know how to integrate step functions. And we're going to define integrals of limits of these step functions to be just the limit of this sequence of integrals. And it's here where our troubles begin. Because to make this definition work, we've got to be selective in the types of sequences of step functions we take here. And also, we're going to have to modify our concepts about the convergence of functions. Well, let's have a look at just precisely what restrictions we placed on our step functions last time. Well, this is the precise definition that you saw in the last program. And what it says is that a function f is in L inc if it is the limit almost everywhere, and that means everywhere except on a null set, of a sequence of step functions. And the conditions that the sequence of step function must satisfy is that, first of all, it's an increasing sequence, and secondly, that the corresponding sequence of integrals must be bounded and so convergent. And then for every function f of this particular kind, we define the integral of f to be the limit of the sequence of integrals. Well, there at our precise definition. Before delving into the bits and pieces of this definition, let's start by looking at a couple of examples which show how the whole definition works. Well, this is an example you saw last time. f is a function which is 1 at all the rational points between 0 and 1, and it's 0 elsewhere. We've just shown a few of these non-zero points. <laughs> 
And last time, you may recall, we had an increasing sequence of step functions converging to f. Remember that phi 1 is a function which is 1 at 0 and 1 and 0 elsewhere. To get phi 2, we increase the value at a half from 0 to 1. To get phi 3, we increase the value at the thirds from 0 to 1, and so on. Now, each phi n is definitely a step function, and the steps occurring just at these points. And also, this is an, an increasing sequence of step functions, because at each stage, we're increasing more values of x from 0 to 1. So we've got an increasing sequence of step functions converging to our limit function f. We have to now show that the sequence of integrals is bounded. Well, last time, you may recall, we saw that the Riemann integral of each phi n is 0. But it's even easier to show that the Lebesgue integral of each phi n is 0. After all, phi n is just a finite combination of characteristic functions over points. And points have length 0, so the integral is 0. So our integrals are bounded, and we know that our increasing sequence of step functions satisfies all the required conditions for our definition. So we can immediately imply that f is in a link, and we know that the integral of f is just the limit of a sequence of zeros, which is 0. Notice, however, that f itself is not a step function, because there's not a finite number of steps. Well, for our second example, we're going to take a sequence of increasing step functions converging to another step function. Now, this time, we'll already know what the integral of our limit function is, and we can check to see if we get the same answer using our Erlink definition of integral. Phi 1 is the 0 function. Phi 2 is the function which is a half between 0 and 1, and 0 elsewhere. Phi 3 is 2 thirds between 0 and 1. Phi 4 is 3 quarters, and so on. That is, phi n is 1 minus 1 on n times the characteristic function of the interval 0, 1. Clearly, the sequence is increasing, and it converges to chi 0, 1. Now, we already know that the integral of chi 0, 1 is just 1. So that's the integral of our limit function as a step function. But the limit of the separate integrals is also 1, because the integral of phi n is 1 minus 1 over n, and the limit of this is 1. So in this case, everything checks. The integral of our limit function is 1, both when we treat this limit function as a step function and when we use our Elink definition of integral. Well, there you've seen the definition in action. And it's about time we started looking at the various bits and pieces that go into its makeup. See, there are a number of points that can be a bit bothersome. The first, of all is first one is related to this concept of convergence almost everywhere. Now, you might have noticed that in the two examples that Roger has just looked at, we had convergence everywhere. There were no convergence problems. And the next few examples that we're going to show you will also not have those convergence problems because we want to leave the discussion of those to the end of the program. What we want to do immediately is to look at these conditions on the sequence of step functions and see if we can do anything about those. Now, you might remember from the last program that Alan Solomon apparently introduced these conditions solely to ensure that this sequence of real numbers converged, so that there was some number that we could take to be the limit of the sequence, and so the integral of whatever function was the limit of the sequence of step functions. But these conditions do a little bit more than that, as we shall see, if we try to vary these conditions. One possibility would be to try and impose directly the condition that this sequence of integrals was convergent. So let's try that and see what, in fact, happens. Well, there we have what could be taken as an alternative definition of the integral of a function in L inc. Let's try and see what happens if we do try and use this as a definition. Well, this time we're going to take a sequence of step functions which converges everywhere to the zero function. Here are the first two functions in our sequence. Phi 1 is 1 on the open interval 0, 1, and 0 elsewhere, so its integral is 1. 
phi 2 is 2 on the open interval 0 to half, so again its integral is 1. Well, let's have a look at the rest of the sequence. Phi 3 has height 3 and width 1 third. Again, the integral is 1. Phi 4 has height 4 and width a quarter. The integral is again 1. So at each stage, our functions are getting taller and proportionately thinner, but the integral remains 1. Notice that our functions are not increasing. At each stage, we get some values which decrease. For example, when we go from phi 3 to phi 4, all these values decrease to 0. Well, it's not hard to show that the limit function of this sequence is the zero function. If we take any x in here, then by going far enough along the sequence, we can be sure that all the remaining functions in the sequence will be zero at that point. For example, if x is one third, then phi three x onwards is zero. If x was one over a thousand, say, phi one thousand x onwards would be zero. And of course, when x is equal to zero, then all the phi's are zero here by definition. So our limit function is the zero function, and we know the integral of our limit function is just the integral of zero, which is zero. And this is not equal to the limit of our sequence of integrals, which is one. So in this case, we have an example where the integral of our limit function is definitely not equal to the limit of our sequence of integrals. So something has gone wrong trying to use this simpler form of a definition. And in fact, it's over here that we've got our troubles because in the example that Roger has just shown you we did not have an increasing sequence of step functions. Well there are two conditions here, one on the sequence of step functions, one on their integrals. We've tried replacing these two conditions by a single condition on the integrals. Now let's try things the other way around and just look at a single condition on the step functions. You see this condition automatically implies that this sequence is an increasing sequence of real numbers. So this bounded condition just ensured convergence. Suppose we try taking this bounded condition away and see whether the single condition on the sequence of step functions implies the convergence of the integrals. OK, well, let's try that with a sequence of characteristic functions of intervals. Phi n is the characteristic function of the closed interval minus n n it's easy to see that the sequence of integrals is unbounded. The integral of phi 1 is 2. This integral is 4. Here the integral is 6, and so on. The sequence of integrals does not converge. But the sequence of step functions does converge to a very simple limit function, a constant function 1. So we certainly do have an increasing sequence here. As we go from each stage, more and more values of x are increasing from 0 to 1. But we can't let the integral of our limit function be just the limit of our sequence of integrals, because in this case, that sequence of integrals is unbounded. It diverges. So if we want our integral to have this property down here, it's quite clear that we can't have just that condition on its own or that condition up the top on its own. We certainly need both of these conditions. So these conditions together seem to do more than just assert the convergence of this sequence of real numbers. They actually make the integral, definition of the integral, make sense. But in fact, they do much more than that because they also help us over our other problem, the problem with convergence. You see, what we're trying to do is to form L inc as all the functions we get in this way. We're trying to say, let us look at all increasing sequences of step functions for which the sequence of integrals is bounded, and then take all those functions f, which are the limit of all such sequences, and put them all together and call that L inc. But the problem now is, Suppose that we are given such a sequence of step functions satisfying this condition, how can we guarantee that such a sequence converges to a limit function? Well, in fact, we can't. And to see the sort of trouble that we can get into, Roger's got another example for us.
Well, here we have the first two functions in our sequence. Phi 1 is 1 in here, except at 0, we're at 0. To get phi 2, we increase the value at 1 to 2, and also at 2 it takes the value 2. And at each stage, we're going to just increase a finite number of values of x. Carrying on from phi 2, the next step function, phi 3, increases its values at the points 1 and 2 to the value 3. And it also increases its value at the point 3 to the value 3. The value of the integral is still 1, of course. Phi 4 increases its values at the points 1, 2, 3 and 4 to the value 4. And again, the integral is 1. So phi n takes the value n at the integers 1, 2, up to n, and L square is just the characteristic function of the open interval 0, 1. Again, the integral is 1. So we have an increasing sequence of step functions with bounded integral. What can we say about the convergence? Well, I think it's fairly easy to see that this sequence phi n is going to diverge at every positive integer. But the set of positive integers is countable. And as we know, any countable set is a null set. And this is the clue. This is not just a coincidence. You'll see a theorem in this week's text. It's not an easy theorem. That if you have any sequence of step functions, increasing and with bounded integral, then the set of points at which you have divergence is at most a null set. Now, this lack of convergence on a null set isn't a disaster, because we can ignore what happens to a function on a null set. In fact, the values of a function don't affect the integral. And we can see that this is plausible if we look at the integral of the characteristic function of a null set. And it is, in fact, plausible that this integral should be zero. We can see this if we recall the definition of a null set. If n is a null set, then for any epsilon, n can be covered by intervals with total length less than epsilon. Now consider the characteristic function of n. The area under its graph ought to be less than the sum of the areas of these rectangles, which is again less than epsilon. This must hold for all epsilon greater than naught, so the integral ought to be zero. And it is as a consequence of the definition that we've actually got. You see, what we do is not talk about a limit function of a sequence of step functions of this kind. We talk about a set of limit functions. And we're going to talk about, instead of convergence, convergence almost everywhere. So what we're going to say is that a function f is in L inc. If there is an increasing sequence of step functions, such that its sequence of integrals is bounded, and for which f is the limit of that sequence almost everywhere, that is, except on a null set. Then, for each f of that kind, we define the integral of f to be the limit of the integral values. Well, that's our definition. Let's see what that means for the example Roger's just been looking at. Well, remember, this is our function phi n. And on this board, we've represented the limit of the sequence phi n x. Remember, we get divergence at all the positive integers. Well, now, suppose I define a function f like this. In other words, phi n x converges everywhere to our function f, except at the positive integers. Well, now, remember, the positive integers is a null set. So phi n x converges everywhere, except on a null set, to this function. That is, converges almost everywhere. So we want the integral of our function f to be just the limit of our sequence of integrals, which gives us 1. OK, well, that's one function almost everywhere. What happens if we start shifting these points about by some arbitrary process? We're going to get some new function g, say. Well, still, g is going to be the limit almost everywhere of our sequence phi n. So again, the integral is going to be 1. Now, let's think carefully what we've done here. The function g takes the limit phi n x when that limit exists. And when the limit doesn't exist at the positive integers, we've defined our function g arbitrarily. Well, now, let's suppose we do something like this. Now, phi n x still converges to 1 here, 
but I've taken the value of the function to be something different. We don't want the value of our integral to be different just because of this one point, and our definition agrees with us. Because still phi in x converges almost everywhere to this function, because the set of positive integers plus this one point is still a null set. In fact, I could have varied this function at every rational in here, and still phi and x will converge almost everywhere to my function, because a set of rationals plus the positive integers is still a null set. So what the almost everywhere means in our definition is not just that the set of points where the sequence of step functions fails to converge is a null set. It means more than that. It means that if we want to say that a function f is the limit almost everywhere of a sequence of step functions, then the set of points at which this sequence fails to converge to the values of the function f, that set must be a null set. And of course, this set of points is a null set because of two contributions. If we look at any particular point where this sequence doesn't converge to the value of f, it can do so for two reasons. The first reason could be it's a point where this sequence of step functions does not converge. And secondly, it could be a point where the sequence does converge but to a value which is not the value of the function at that particular point. So that's our definition. And let's sort of close with one more consequence of this definition. And it relates to the integral of the characteristic function of a null set that we discussed earlier, where we said it was plausible that the integral would be zero. We can now prove that from our definition. And the way I'm going to do it is to choose a sequence of step functions. And I'm going to take each phi n to be the zero step function. So what, the, what I get here is a sequence of zeros, which converges to zero. Now, if I do take f to be the characteristic function of any null set, then it is the limit almost everywhere of this sequence of zero step functions. My definition now implies that the integral of f must be the limit of the sequence of integrals. So we have now proved directly from our definition that the integral of the characteristic function of a null set is zero.